So what does it mean when you have something that is in key? This is a question I just got from Kiefer Sutherland again. No, not that Kiefer Sutherland, although we can still pretend, right? Uh, but Kiefer Sutherland just asked on YouTube in one of the comments on the video, hey, what does it mean when somebody says, hey, you've got this lick, it's in the key of G, what's going on with that? And I just got this exact same question from a student yesterday. So let's dive into what the heck that means and remove all the mystery from what does it mean when something is in key? Now we have to start with first understanding in music, we have 12 notes. A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and then it just repeats and it continues up and down in both directions, repeating the exact same pattern. So all the music you've ever heard is only 12 notes. That's really good, right? That's actually really good because a lot of people think maybe there's 10,000 different notes in music and I've heard all this complicated stuff. No, it's all 12 notes. So. What we do though is in music, we take those 12 notes and we group them into families of notes that we call scales. So for example, we could have the G major scale, which the G major scale is made up of these notes. It's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and then G. And then that continues. Right? And so anytime you have a G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, or G, those notes belong to the scale of G major. Now, what it means is when something is in key is that something in the key of G major belongs to that scale or that family, okay? And anytime you use those notes from that family of belonging to that G scale, it is in key. Now there's multiple ways that we can do this. Let's say that you have a guitar lick that uses those notes. That is in the key of G because I just used those scale notes. Those notes all came from the key of G because I started on this A and I played a G and then I played an E and a D and a C and I played A and G again and it still sounded. like I was in the key of G. Now, that could also be used for another key because those same notes belong to other keys. But in this instance, everything I just played, it all fits the key of G. So that's what it means when something is in key is, okay, these are the notes that we're using. We're using the key of G. Or you'll hear someone say, oh yeah, this lick is in you know A minor pentatonic. So what that means is you're taking your minor pentatonic scale shape, which on the guitar, most people learn that shape like this first, starting on my A note on the sixth string with just my fifth fret, and then the eighth fret on that same string and then on the next, which is a C note, right? And then on the next string we play D and E, and next string we play G and A, and next string we have C and D, and the next string we have our um, E and G, and next string we have A and C again. And so someone saying that this lick comes from A minor pentatonic means, oh, you're playing this scale, but you're using the notes of that scale like this, like, Like those notes that I use, I used different rhythm, I used different phrasing, and that created a cool little lick that you can use. Now let's go back to our key of G. The other thing that it could mean is we could use the notes of that scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and we could build chords off of those. So we could take the notes G, and then B, and then D, and we could build a chord, G, B, D. And if you know your G major chord, that's your first chord there. Or we could take the notes A, C, and E. And what I'm doing with these is I'm starting on one note and then taking every other note till I have three notes. So G, skipping A, and then B, and then skipping C, and then getting D. That's three notes. That gives you your chord. And then same thing with A. A is where I'm starting, then I'm gonna skip B, and I'm gonna take C, and I'm gonna skip D and grab E, and right there, I've got A 
minor triad. So this is A minor. Or if I start from B, I could have B, and then I'm gonna skip C and grab D, and I'm gonna skip E and grab F sharp. So I've got this. That's a B minor chord which is the easiest way to do B minor if you're just starting out and you can't do a full B minor bar chord like that or like this. What you do is you put your first finger on the second fret of your first string and then your second finger on the third fret of your second string and then your third finger on the fourth fret of your third string and play your fourth string open. That's a B minor. That's a much easier way to do it than just doing a full bar chord. But because that B minor chord uses the same notes from that G major scale, that B minor is in the key of G. If we keep doing this, we could come up with our C major chord, our D major chord, our E minor chord, and our F sharp diminished chord, and then that would give us, using just the notes of your G major scale, that would give us all the chords that are within that key. Now, playing in key means that everything that you're using, whether it's notes for licks or for melodies or riffs, are coming from the G major scale. And on top of that, it means that the chords that you're using are built off of those same notes of your G major scale. And when you do that, we get that we have G major, A minor, B minor, C major, D major, E minor and F sharp diminished are the seven basic chords that you could use in the key of G major. Now there's other stuff that you can do that will make it sound more interesting, but that's beyond the scope of this particular video. We'll talk about that in another video. Well, what if it's minor? What if it's not in a major key? What if we are doing G minor? What do we do then? Well, that means that that is based on your G minor scale. And so that means everything using notes, whether it's the melody, the licks, the riff, whatever it is, is coming from that G minor scale. And the same chords that are being used, the seven basic chords built off of that are from the G minor scale as well. So what are the notes of the G minor scale? Well, if you know your G major scale, you can start the scale the exact same way, but we're gonna flat three notes, which means we're gonna take them, we're gonna play them one fret lower. We're gonna start on G, and that's still the same note. We're also gonna play A, but instead of playing B, we're gonna play B flat. So that note is one half step lower. So now we have G, we have A, and we have B flat. And then on the next string, we're gonna have C. We're gonna have D, those are still the same, but instead of E, we're gonna have E flat. So we'll have G, A, B flat, and then we're gonna have C, D, E flat, and then we're also going to flatten our F sharp note and make it just F. And then we have G, and then that is the seven notes of your G minor scale. So if something is in the key of G minor, that means that all the notes and all the chords are built off of those notes from that scale. For example, our first chord in that key would be G, and then we're gonna skip A and grab B flat, and then we're gonna grab, skip C and grab D, so we have G, B flat, and D, G, B flat, D. That is a G minor chord. And then for A, we have A, we're gonna skip B flat and grab C, and then we're gonna skip D and grab E flat. Now that, is ugly, and that is a, a diminished chord. And then we, well, okay, it's not really ugly, guys, but you know, it's it's harder to use in certain contexts, that's normal, okay? Then for B flat, what we're gonna do is we have B flat, we're gonna skip C, we're gonna grab D, and then we're going to skip our E flat and grab F, so we have B, D, F. And that gives us a B major chord. So we have a G minor chord, we have A diminished, and we have B major, B flat major. And we could keep going and we would have C minor, we would have D minor, E flat major, and then F major as well, and that takes us back to our G minor. So 
in the key of G minor, it's going to use those chords that are built off the G minor scale, and it's really gonna focus around that G minor. Like you're gonna be able to tell, oh yeah, this is using G minor a lot, usually to start or end the song, and that is gonna be your first clue about, okay, it's in G minor, right? So I hope that answers the question for you of what does it mean when something is in key? It means that there is a scale or a family of notes that all the notes for the licks, for the melody, for everything in the song, and even the chords in the song are built off of the notes of that scale. So that means if you understand your different scales, how to find your major scales, minor scales, different stuff like that, what chords go with certain keys? So if I'm in a major key, what chords work in that key? Or if I'm in a minor key, what chords work in that key? Now this gets really, really handy and useful because for example, I just got asked to play with a couple of different bands for a couple of different gigs and I was able to go in and they were like, okay, song is in this key and we're doing this and it's really simple. And as soon as they say, okay, we're in the key of A major, I know the notes that I need are A, B minor, C minor, C sharp minor, D major, E major, F sharp minor, and then I could have G sharp diminish and then back up to A. So those are my most possible chords that are most likely to get used. So as I'm going through the song and, and figuring it out, if I know that, that makes it way easy to just figure stuff out by ear and to be able to follow playing along with other people. So understanding your scales and how your scales work with your chords is really valuable because it makes it easier for you to jam with other people and to write your own music and to learn new music without having to look it up and go, okay, what's the tab? If you can figure out, okay, this song is in the key of B flat, right? Then if once you establish that, you can go, okay, in the key of B flat, my scale is this and my chords are this, and I can be able to do all sorts of fun stuff, right? Now that you know that, the thing to do is to really look at where these different chords come from and how to find them on the fretboard. So I will link you to a video for that at the end of this, but I have another gift for you as well. If you haven't gotten it already, go to my website at simpleguitar.com slash top 10, and there you can get the top 10 things to learn on guitar first. It's a free guide I put together, it's 17 pages, 10 things that I love to teach people that give them a lot of bang for their buck with their guitar playing rather than just struggling and going, okay, what do I do next? How am I gonna get better? These 10 things will help you sound better when you play. They'll help you know and understand what you're doing a lot better. And most importantly, you're gonna be able to impress your friends, right? So go get that guide for free at simpleguitar.com slash top 10. And then go check out this video about how to find the different chords from a scale, where these chords come from. And I will see you in the next video.